to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Supervisor Retzloff is excused, and I'm assuming that Supervisor Frederick and Supervisor Bostrom forgot that we were starting at 7 tonight. Hopefully they will join us at 7.30. We'll move on with citizen comments. If there are any citizens to speak, please come to the podium. State your name and address for the record, and you'll have five minutes to speak. Good evening. My name is Kathleen Gloff. I'm a pastor of Summers Community United Church of Christ. And I'm here because I am concerned that it's 37 degrees outside and we have homeless people in our county. And because I'm a pastor, I want to share with you a prayer that came across my desk about street ministry by Quentin Chin and Becky Crane. Let us pray. Loving and merciful God, your compassion knows no bounds. You are a source of hope for people whose lives are a constant struggle. You love us even when we don't feel we are loved. You know our names. We pray for those in our community who need your love and compassion. We pray that you give them strength for their days. We pray that you shine a light to dispel their darkness and give them hope to end their anxiety. We pray for Ken who struggles with his addictions. He lost his home and his family. Help him in his recovery, which is day by day. We need to know Ken because Ken is our neighbor. We pray for Julie, a single mom who lost her job and without work couldn't support her children. They went into foster care. She cries every day and wants to work so she can get them back. We need to know Julie because Julie is our neighbor. We pray for Barney, a veteran with PTSD. He drinks a lot, so he can't go to the Shalom Center. People shun him because of his rage. We need to know Barney, because Barney is our neighbor. We pray for Beth. She fights the voices in her head every day. They make her ill. She says they drive her crazy. We need to know Beth, because Beth is our neighbor. We pray for Steve. He just got out of a house of correction for the fifth time. He says he was wrongfully accused. His wife won't take him back. He is angry and no one will hire him. We need to know Steve because Steve is our neighbor. We pray for Annie. Every day she walks her baby in a stroller. She loves her baby, talks to her baby, and shows off her baby. Her baby is a doll. We need to know Annie because Annie is our neighbor. We pray for Susan. She was raped as a teenager. Her husband physically abused her. She ran away. She shoots heroin. We need to know Susan because Susan is our neighbor. We pray for Carl. He had a business in town. He lost it in the recession. His husband kicked him out because he drank too much. No one wants to hire him. We need to know Carl because Carl is our neighbor. Though our neighbors aren't sitting here with us tonight, oh God, help us to sit next to them. Prod us to leave this building to sit with our neighbors. Open our ears to hear their stories. Give us strength to help bear their stories. Open our hearts that we might love them as you would love them. Amen. It is 37 degrees out tonight. Thank you. Any other citizen comments? Good evening. My name is Ann Morelli. My husband, Tom Morelli, and I own Morelli's Deli Catering. It's located at 7506 7th Avenue 
Here in Kenosha, we also live four tenths of a mile from the store. Um, I'm here tonight to speak on behalf of Kemper Center. I wish that you would keep supporting Kemper Center. The facility needs every penny that can be spared. Um, I've been catering there for three years. I serve Kiwanis and Rotary weekly, and I also have served some people for weddings and um, other types of events. I really sincerely believe that every penny is well spent, and it's a benefit to the neighborhood and to the county. Thank you. Thank you. Any other citizen comments? Hello, my name is Maura Cook, uh, 8207 4030 Avenue, Kenosha. I'd like to speak to you a little bit about the Kemper Center and what it means to me. Uh, I have been a volunteer at the Kemper Center for four years now. I am um, also a tour guide. Um, ever since then, it's, it's been a part of my life. Um, I love the history. I love the history of Charles Durkee, the Durkee Mansion, the history of the Kemper Hall, which was the all-girls school for 100 years there, and the Anderson Art Center, which was the former home of Janet Lance Anderson, who was also a 1910 graduate of um, Kemper Hall. What I love the most about being a tour guide at Kemper is uh, during the school year, I get to share the history with the third graders of Kenosha. Um, most of the third graders um, from most of the elementary schools come through, usually during the spring, Kemper, for a tour. Um, this is the time that they learn about the history of Kenosha. And um, they're very excited about coming and sharing their knowledge also with us. Um, I also love um, volunteering at the Turkey Mansion. Uh, when the mansion is open to the public, which is mostly all summer, it starts in the spring, the summer, and ends in October. I love greeting our guests. They come from all over people who are coming through on vacation, people who are visiting their family, um, uh, people come from Chicago, Milwaukee area, just for a day trip to come and see us and, and visit Kenosha. Um, also, the fun part of sitting in the mansion and greeting is we get to see a lot of um, wedding parties going back and forth from the chapel, back and forth from the chapel. Um, we have many, many weddings there. Uh, probably every summer, every um, Saturday in the summer, um, sometimes maybe even two in one day. Um, so that's very exciting also. Um, they have their pictures taken on the beautiful grounds at Kemper. I can't think of a be more beautiful place to have a wedding. Uh, now we're getting ready for all our Christmas events. Um, the mansion is closed now, giving our talented, dedicated uh, decorators a chance to decorate the mansion, getting ready for our Christmas at Kemper. We're also excited about our Mrs. Claus Cafe, which includes a cookie decorating for the children in Founders Hall. Anderson Art Center volunteers and decorators are also getting geared up for their wonderful Gallery of Trees and Gala event. We are all very excited about this wonderful time of year at Kemper. Kemper is also offering something new for 2018. Lisa, our Executive Director, and Robin, our Volunteer Coordinator, have put together a brochure and we are offering tours of both Jerky and Anderson and a wonderful hot buffet lunch catered by the Morelli's um, Catering Service. And um, from what I understand, we already have tours booked for um, the spring of 2018. 
I understand uh, a lot a lot has been going on um, and, and we're very excited about it. Um, in closing, I've heard at least two people refer to the mansion as a gem in our community. I can't agree more. Uh, there's not a corner you can pass by in that facility that doesn't have a piece of history that goes along with it. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Any other citizen comments? Good evening, Madam Chairwoman. I believe we've met. I'm Mark Mullinaro, 1011 12th Street, Kenosha. Uh, I'm here this evening at the request of Kemper Center uh, to talk a little bit about the project that they're currently contemplating and uh, intending to move forward with in the relative near future, <clears throat> which is the reconstruction of the third and fourth floor of the uh, Simmons building. So we were before Dennis, uh, Supervisor Elmer's committee last night made a presentation, uh, wanted to briefly touch base with the uh, county board as a whole. Uh, after all, what would a budget hearing be at Kenosha County without conversation about Kemper Center, right? So uh, what we're proposing to do and uh, have received multiple bids on the project is to renovate the third and fourth floor into uh, studio offices, uh, artist, uh, musician studio offices, and we have gone through a very similar process that Kenosha County would go through in terms of soliciting bids. So we went out uh, with a set of, uh, of documents uh, and uh, brought in three individual bids from separate contractors. We've vetted all three of them and we've made a determination on, at this point, the lowest qualified bidder. Uh, when I say lowest qualified, uh, the lowest two are within about $3,000 of each other. We've selected one that we believe has the expertise to renovate a building like this. It is a firm that I've had some experience with. Uh, in fact, in a number of, of uh, other nonprofit organizations that Kenosha County has supported over the, over the years, inclusive of the uh, Racine Kenosha Community Impact Agency, or community, I believe that's what it's referred to as. So, uh, someone we're very comfortable with. I want to make this clear, this is all funding uh, in excess of 365,000, is that right? Through what? 325, I have to remember that, that 325, I keep saying 365 because I'm hoping there'll be some fee in there for me, uh, but as, as of yet, I haven't been successful in convincing me of that. You know, the late Clarence Griffin, I finally learned not to take his phone calls when he called, but now I, I got to get Gary's number memorized so I don't take his calls either. <laughs> um, so that is all funds raised independent of any funding through Kenosha County. Uh, it's important to know, and I bring that up for a couple of reasons. Obviously, the conversation beyond just what Kemper is currently contemplating with this project uh, is how's Kemper funded? Who's paying for what? Is it a fair deal? Is it a fair deal? That's really your conversation to have. What I would ask you to do this evening, both uh, on behalf of Kemper, uh, this specific project, but then just bigger picture, is uh, to have that conversation outside of the budget cycle. So it makes no difference to me, uh, and we've certainly hashed through this discussion previously, it makes no difference to me what the organization is with Kemper. Uh, there's been some argument that uh, the county runs Brookside, the county runs golf courses, you could easily run this property. Well, that may or may not be, be the case, but that's a conversation to be had outside of the budget. What I'm asking for you here tonight on behalf of Kemper Center is that you uh, keep this structure intact. You recognize that this is another $325,000 that Kemper Center Inc. is putting into this county facility, which is a fantastic property. Uh, my Rotary Club meets there every Tuesday. Uh, there's conversation about uh, uh, serving Rotary Clubs, Kiwanis Clubs, mine is one of them. My club alone raised $250,000 uh, back in, might have been 94, Four-ish, 97, when the uh, south building uh, or the south uh, uh, structure was renovated over there, that was a million and a half dollar project. Not all of that funding came from Kenosha County or the taxpayer by any stretch. Our quarter of a million from our Rotary Club plus whatever Kemper put into it. So if you add that up over the years, inclusive of, of this $325,000, it is a significant, significant contribution to this partnership. Uh, I encourage you to be uh, part of this process. As we go forward, we'll certainly keep you in the loop in terms of uh, the progress. Our hope is to get started here within the next month or so. 
And uh, we anticipate, as I mentioned in the committee last night, that this to be somewhere, I said three to five, unlikely to be three. It's probably going to be closer to the four, four and a half to five month uh, construction cycle. But we're excited about it. I'm excited for Kemper and certainly excited for Kenosha County. It'll be a, a good addition to that property. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Lisa Dretzky, the Executive Director at Kemper Center, Inc. I live at 815 115th Street, Pleasant Prairie, Wisconsin, 53158. I am pretty new still to Kemper Center, Inc. I started just about a year ago, and one of the things I must say is we do a lot. <laughs> and just in a short year, um, really starting to see a lot of it all unravel and see everything happening all around me. and. Um, just in the year I've been here, I've seen thousands of visitors come through Kemper Center. This year alone, we had five Twilight Jazz concerts, which are free to the community. And um, the first concert, we did something new and we held it at Paddock Lake. Um, this is a great way for us to try and reach out to the community of Kenosha and um, meet people that are west of the eye. We also offer free admission to the Anderson Arts Center and Durkee Mansion. And last year alone, the Anderson Arts Center brought in 7,600 visitors and Durkee Mansion brought in 3,500. This year at Kids Art Camp, we had four weeks of unique art experiences taught by local artists and with volunteers from area high schools. We had about 120 students all in attendance as well. We also had about 600 third graders walk through the doors and um, they were all from area Kenosha County schools and they got the full tour of Kemper along with um, other tour groups that came in from bus tours, um, senior centers, lunch tours, all of those. And then Haunted House, which just wrapped up, was it last weekend already? And we had over 1,300 people visit the Haunted House. And that was put on collaboratively with the Teen Task Force. And we were very thankful also for um, Jeff Lambolt for volunteering and helping us out with that initiative. We're very excited for Christmas at Kemper, as Mara already brought up. Um, it's only 19 days away. It's kind of scary to think that Christmas is that close. And this event is something for everybody. We have the Gallery of the Trees, where Anderson is all decorated. Um, by local decorators and florists. And then Durkee Mansion, again, is decorated for Christmas. And then the Christmas Gala, which is on opening night. And I will be giving you guys all little postcards in your packets for your next meeting. And also the Mrs. Claus Cafe, Snowflake Jazz, which is our sixth free community jazz concert which is open to the public as well. And then of course the Wonderland Ball, which is for all the ballroom dance lovers, maybe some of you guys that wanna come and um, test out your dancing shoes. And then one last thing I wanted to bring up that I'm especially excited for since I started my job here at Kemper Center Inc. Um, we, when we're starting the renovation of the third and fourth floors of Simmons Auditorium, it's been over 40 years since the area, this area of Kemper Center has really been utilized and Kemper Center Inc. is excited to invest and put life back into this area and into this county building. Um, we want to see it get utilized, especially by local artists, um, to have them have this personal space that they really can cherish and understand how beautiful Kemper grounds are. And we're also excited that Kemper Center Inc. can contribute yet another way to the creative economy here in Kenosha County. Thank you. Thank you. Any other citizen comments? Citizen comments? Any other citizen comments? Seeing no other citizen comments, I'm going to close that section and we'll go ahead and move on. Presentation. Presentation of the Kenosha County 2018 budget by Supervisor Rose. Supervisor Rose, you have the floor. All right, thank you very much. Uh, the um, Finance Committee uh, reviewed the budget uh, over a week and uh, heard from administration and comments from citizens uh, and received all of the input and make that presentation to you for debate uh, tomorrow evening. Um, my object this evening is to touch on a few of the highlights of that budget. 
uh, for your consideration and uh, thought tomorrow. The uh, general purpose uh, levy this year is some $65,622,000. Uh, it is a 2.74% increase. Uh, it also meets the state levy limits requirements. If you take the average uh, over the last 10 years and ask yourself, well, what kind of uh, increases have we seen in the general purpose levy over the last 10 years? It averages some 2.2 percent. I think that's uh, significantly low and certainly less than uh, most of the uh, requirements that uh, we have set forth in our annual budget resolution. So again, 2.2 percent average over the last uh, 10 years. Uh, if you take the just a home of $100,000 for 2017, the tax increase uh, out of this 2018 budget uh, on that $100,000 home is a $1.95 increase. Uh, that would be a grand total of $495.89 to arrive at a, I say again, a $1.95 increase. Very, very, very modest. <clears throat> Equalized value in Kenosha County has increased this year uh, rather significantly. If you call the uh, Great Recession, the um, equalized value in the county declined rather significantly and the outlook was rather bleak. Uh, we're not quite back where we were prior to the Great Recession, but we are almost there. Uh, equalized value this past year has increased $581 million, 4.5% increase. Of that, 2.3% uh, is attributable to new construction, uh, and the 2.2% is uh, attributable just to general increases in the value of real estate. So uh, I think that's a very significant increase. And we went, when we made our presentation to uh, the bonding agencies in Chicago this summer, uh, they were impressed by it as well compared to where we were during the Great Recession. Where are the increases in the budget this year? Uh, none of them are surprises. Sheriff's Department is right up there as is Human Services, uh, Debt Service, and uh, Brookside Levy increase uh, is offset as well offset against those increases as is the contribution from the sales tax revenue. Sales tax revenue is up rather significantly because of the general economy and also because of the um, great deal of commercial construction. So you see a, a significant increase in the sales tax. Uh, personnel costs are up some $2.6 million and uh, it you add up the number of employees eliminated, or positions rather eliminated, and also new positions created, uh, you're going to find that uh, it adds up to a little over five new employees equivalent in the 2018 budget. Uh, capital improvements in the coming year, there is 15.1 million uh, dollars bonding for capital expenditures of uh, 19 and a half million dollars. Uh, this sum of it is going to be funded by grants and other intergovernmental uh, revenues. We're going to see some increases in capital uh, spending and in information technology, uh, the facilities division, highways, uh, parks, uh, sheriff's department, and also the high impact fund uh, replenishment for future economic development. And that's a very significant uh, piece uh, for Kenosha County. Uh, if you take a look at, and I think this is one of the issues that seems to be of particular interest, what is the Parks Division where Kemper Center is under? Well, what is the increase there? Well, Parks Division has $1.2 million capital expenditures and $753,000 for park infrastructure improvements. So keep that figure in mind when you're thinking about what Kemper Center is all about, what it costs Kenosha County, and compared to 
the rest of the park division. Uh, budget resolution contains a lot of policy. Uh, some of those policies are continuing year after year, but study it, you'll see that uh, certain changes there. Uh, CABA is going to administer uh, community development investment grants, uh, which was explained to us as some new grants coming into Kenosha County. County administration to create a uh, comprehensive plan to uh, deal with the issue of delinquent tax collections. We've had a number of finance committee meetings and it's been discussed here on the county board and uh, it's been publicized in the newspaper and I want to underscore this evening that uh, this year there's going to be a big effort made to collect delinquent taxes and the public should note this and if your taxes are delinquent this is the time to uh, pay up as there will be a, a significant change in the tax collection for delinquent taxes. Treasurer's office has promised us that uh, one year uh, we're going to be uh, clean that up. So there's going to be a substantial effort on the part of uh, the Corporation Council in cooperation with the uh, uh, county treasurer as well as information technology and, and finance department to make a, a strong effort in that, uh, in that way. Willowbrook, the new facility, uh, will be able to adjust Q current and future budgets for nursing. In other words, if they need more nurses, fewer LPNs or CNAs or vice versa, they'll be able to do that by the authorization that's in the budget. It'll be a little quicker than returning to the county board every time they want to make that kind of adjustment. There's a piece of property that uh, in this particular area at 1018 56th Street, just west of this building, that the uh, county government would like to purchase. We made a number of purchases, as you know, in this area for future county development and preservation of the district. Uh, if there is a sheriff's sale of this property, the administration through the Corporation Council's office wants authority to make a bid on that. There will be a study by the uh, personnel department, county administration for some new, for new positions related to operational and organizational changes. That study will be presented to the county board uh, for our advice and consent. Um, I said we, uh, overall there were a few changes made to the budget, uh, mostly in the uh, county executive's budget. Uh, but overall, we found that the budget was a lean one, that one uh, that the committee unanimously supported, and uh, we'll urge your support tomorrow evening. Thank you, and on your desk, uh, you'll see some green sheets with various replacement pages based upon changes made in the budget. If you want the administration to uh, insert those pages in your budget book, just leave your budget book on your desk, and it'll be taken care of. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Rose. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I have a first by Supervisor Rose and a second by Supervisor O'Day. All those in favor to adjourn, say aye. Aye. Opposed? We're adjourned.